Hello! In this video, you're going to learn how to recreate Brickbreaker in Unreal Engine from a completely blank project. This is part of the series where I recreate 5 games in Unreal Engine from complete scratch. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the first part of this series where I recreate Punk in Unreal Engine from scratch. I'll put it somewhere on the screen now. In this video, I kind of glazed through the part where I set up input, as in that video I kind of explain it in a bit more detail, but if you understand how to set up input controls, then you don't need to. And if you're interested in learning how to create even more full and depth games inside of Unreal Engine, make sure to check out my website. A link to it can be found in the description of this video. Okay, with all of that said, let's get into the video. To get started, I'm in the Unreal Project Browser, and again, I'm just going to select the blank template as we'll be coding this from scratch. Although this time, I'm just going to enable the starter content. This basically just includes some assets which will be in our project. And I'm just going to call my project name Brick Breaker. And I will create it. The next thing we're going to do is create a new level for our Brick Breaker game. So I'm just going to go to my content drawer and make sure that this is docked in the layout. And then if we just go to our content folder, right click and just go new folder. And I'm just going to call this my uh, maps. Then if we just go to the top and go file, new level, and select a basic level, create it. Then we just want to click the save button, go to our maps folder, and just save this level as level 1. So the next thing we're going to do is create a paddle which the player character can use. So if we just go back to our content folder, we want to right click and create a new folder, and just call this blueprints. We want to head inside here, right click again, and we want to go to blueprint class and select a pawn. We just want to call this the paddle underscore blueprint. Open this up, and then if we go to the components tab and go add, and we just want to look for a static mesh this time, and just call this paddle. For um, this static mesh, we just want to go here where it's a static mesh, and look for a capsule, and we just want the shape um, underscore narrow capsule. And then for the scale of it, I found these um, settings work quite well. So for the x-axis, put 1.75, and for the y-axis, put 1.75 as well. And then for the um, z-axis, put 2. And then just rotate it 90 degrees in the um, y-axis to this one and then we just want to rotate it and then kind of just make it so it's in the center here so around like here okay so this will be the um, paddle that my player plays the um, brick breaker game with we can just go add and then we want to add a camera and just move it so this camera is looking directly down on the um, paddle so at 90 degrees, just like that. We can then just compile this and save. The next thing we're gonna do is make it so we start the game off as this paddle on character. So to do that, we need to create a new game mode. So if we just right click, go blueprint class, and select game mode base, and I'll call this my brick breaker game mode. If I open this up, for the default pawn class, I'm just gonna make this my um, paddle blueprint. So this is going to be the um, character that we start the game as. We can compile and save this. And to make it so we start the game off as this character, just make sure you go to window and that you've selected world settings. Then this tab here should appear. And we can just drag in the Brit Breaker game mode here. And this player start where this is. This is gonna be where um, the player starts in the game. So if we click on the play button, we should start off as the player character. Nice. So the next thing we need to do is make it so the player can move towards the left and right, just like in the classic Brick Breaker game. So we're going to add input. So if I just go back to my content folder, we can create a new folder. And I will just call this input. I will head inside here, right click. And if I just go input and select input mapping context, and I'll just call this the Brick Breaker underscore input mapping context. So inside of here, we're basically going to have all of the controls that we're going to have in our Brick Breaker game. So next, we need to make a control. So if we just right click and go input, select input action, and just call this the move underscore input action. 
open this up and we just want to change this um, to be an access 1D. We can then uh, save this and go over to the brick breaker input mapping context, add a new mapping, which is going to be the um, move input action. And in order for the player to move, we're going to make it so they can move with the left or the right arrow key. So for this first one, I'm just going to make it right. And then I'm going to add another control binding. And this time I'm going to select left. Although for the left one, we just want to add a modifier and that is going to be the negate modifier because that will basically do the opposite of this. Then if we just save this and go over to our paddle blueprint, go over to the event graph and event we can play it, we're going to add our controls to our game. So if we just right click and look for get controller, then from here we just want to drag off and cast to the player controller. And from here, we can look for enhanced input local player subsystem. We want to check to see that this is valid. So we're just checking to see that we have a valid reference to the player's controller. And if we do, then we drag off here and look for add mapping context. And we just want to add the brick breaker input mapping context. And that will add the controls from our brick breaker game to our um, paddle character here. So next, if we just right click and look for the move input action, then when the player presses either the right or the left arrow key, this triggered node is going to fire. And we just want to drag up here and look for add local offset to the paddle. We just want to right click on this data location and split the structure pin. And we want to move our paddle in the um, in the Z axis because we rotated um, the capsule. So that's why it needs to be the Z axis. I'm just going to go back here and then we just want to drag up here and look for multiply and if we just right click here and promote this to arrival and we can just call this our paddle speed let's compile this and let's just make it 10 and then connect this into z here and now if we go compile and i go play i can move my paddle towards the left and towards the right nice Okay, so now that we've set this up, I'm gonna make it so um, we actually don't use the camera from our paddle. We actually use a camera which we place somewhere inside of our level. So to do that, I'm just gonna go here, where it says quickly add things to the project. And I'm just gonna go to all classes and select a camera actor. And let's just um, position it somewhere like here. And then just rotate it down 90 degrees like that then if we could go here and go open level blueprint right click and create a reference to the camera actor then if we just right click and it will get player controller and just drag off here and it will set view target with blend for the new view target connect this into here and connect event begin play into here so as soon as the game starts we're going to make it so we use and can view the game from this camera actor so just compile and test that out so if i go play we should view it from um, this camera so that is working correctly in order to fix the settings of this camera just go over to details and we just want to uncheck constraint aspect ratio and then that way um when we play our game we should see the full camera nice so i'm just going to move my camera up a bit for the time being so it's a bit further out Okay, nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a ball which the player can play the Brick Breaker game with. This is gonna be very similar to the ball that we made in the ping pong game. So to create it, we can just right click, go blueprint class, select an actor, and just call this the ball blueprint. We can open this up, go to components and just add a sphere. And we just wanna scroll down and we want to make sure that this is simulating physics so here it is simulating physics and then we just want to go to constraints and then we just want to make sure that we lock its position in the z-axis that way it can't um, move down in the z-axis and then if we just go to the event graph event begin play we just want to drag off here and look for add impulse sphere right click here and look for split structure pin and for now just add an impulse of 1200 to the z-axis and just check velocity change 
make sure that that's checked, otherwise it moves kind of slowly. Then we can compile and save this. And if I just drag my ball, so it starts here, somewhere in front of the player start, when I play my game. Okay, whoops, if we just go back to the ball blueprint, we actually want to make this minus 1200. And just go compile, that way the ball kind of um, bounces towards the player. So if we go play, we can see when the game starts, the ball bounces towards the player. Nice. So the next thing we're going to do is play some walls, basically, around um, the player and the ball, and that's where they're going to play the Brick Breaker game. So I'm just going to go back here, where it says quickly, add things to the project, go to shapes, and select a cube. And then I'm just going to go select and scale objects. And I am just going to um, expand this. If you select Alt while selecting an object, you can quickly duplicate it. And I'm just going to place one here. Okay, so I added some um, walls around my um, ball and my player character. So the next thing we're going to do is basically make it so um, when our ball hits the player or the walls, it doesn't lose its velocity. So we're going to create a physics material exactly like we did last time. So if I just go over to my content folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder and I'll just call this materials. I will head inside here, right click and we just want to go physics and select a physics material. I will select this and I'll just call this my bouncy material and if I head inside here we want to make the friction zero so that this object has um, no friction when it basically hits something else and we also want to make the restitution one that way when it hits something it basically keeps its bounciness the um, higher this value the more it will keep its bounciness when it hits something we can save this and then we just want to apply this physics material to all of our walls so I'm just going to select all of them, if we hold shift, we can select all of them, and if I just scroll down and go to physics material, I'll just select the bouncy material, then if I go over to my blueprints, we're going to go over to the ball, and just select it, and make sure it uses the bouncy material, and we want to do the same thing for our paddle, we want to make sure that it's using the um, bouncy material, we can compile and save all of this. And with that, our ball should kind of keep its bounciness when it hits something. And then, like last time, I want to make it so every time my ball hits something, it kind of speeds up. So if we just go over to the ball blueprint and select the sphere. Make sure that we have um, simulate generate hit events. And if we just go over to the event graph, and we just want to right click and look for event hit, whenever we hit something, we want to basically create a new variable, and just call this um, ball speed, change this to be a float, and we make the starting speed 1200, so I'm going to make um, the starting value of this 1200, and every time we hit something, we just want to drag up here, and look for add. Now I'm only going to increase uh, my ball speed a tiny bit when I hit something in this game. So I'm just going to make it 5. And then we want to tell the game that is our new ball speed. So I'll just look at set ball speed. And then to actually apply this to our um, ball, we can drag in our sphere. Drag off here and look for get physics linear velocity. We want to drag off this return value and look for clamp vector size and just drag in the ball speed and connect this into min and max then we just want to drag up here and for set physics linear velocity and just connect this into here and this into here so with this every time our ball basically hits a wall or our paddle it will kind of speed up the next thing we're going to do is create some bricks that my ball can basically break. So if we just go over to our blueprint folder, go to blueprint class, and select a actor, and I'll just call this my brick underscore blueprint. I will open it up, and if I just go to components, let's go add, 
and let's just add a cube and let's just um, scale it and dig Y a bit so it's kind of like this and let's just go compile then we go over to the event graph we want to basically make sure our cube is selected and we also want this to generate um, hit events and we just want to right click and look for event hit if we ever hit so if this cube ever hits the ball we want to destroy this cube so if we just drag off other and look for cast to ball blueprint if this is hit by the ball then we just want to drag off here and look for destroy actor and actually before we destroy this actor we're just going to spawn a particle effect so if i just drag off here and look for spawn emitter at location and for the emitter just select the explosion and for the location we can just right click and look for get actor location and connect this into here and then just go compile so now if i drag in this brick i'll place it here and if i go play and i hit this brick we can see um it's destroyed when it's hit by the ball then it plays that explosion particle effect nice so in Brick Breaker, some bricks require multiple hits in order to be destroyed. So we're going to create a similar system here. So depending on the brick, it may take two shots or three shots to be destroyed by the ball. So before we create the system, we are going to create some materials and, and these materials will represent the strength of the brick. So if we just right click and go material and just call this the master material, open it up and if we just um, right click and look for the constant three vector and just connect this into base color here we want to right click and convert this to a parameter just call this color for now and just go apply and save then we just want to right click on this and go create material instance and just call this the red instance then uh, right click on this again create another material instance just call this the green instance then um, right click on this again create another material instance and just call this the yellow instance open up the green instance just select like this color and change it to be a green color and save this by creating a material um, instance it makes it just a lot easier to kind of change the settings in the material rather than just creating new materials so that's why we did it that way if i open up the red one i will select the color and change it to be red then if i just um go to the yellow one i will select the color and change this to be yellow and i'm just going to save everything next if we go back to our blueprints if we just open up the brick blueprint and we just want to create a new variable and call it brick strength for the variable type change it to be an integer and then we just want to create a new function and just call this update brick color and then we just want to drag in the brick strength get it drag off here and look for switch on int and add three pins connect update brick color into here so when our um, brick has a strength of three, so I'm just gonna compile this and let's make the default value three. When our brick has a strength of three, we can um, drag in our cube, drag off here and look for set material. And let's make it so it's the um, green material. So I'll look for green and connect this into here. When our brick has a strength of 2, let's drag off here and look for set material. And let's make it the red one. I will connect this into 2. Then when our brick has a strength of 1, let's make it the yellow one. So I'll look for set material. And I'll make this yellow. And connect this into 1. Then we just want to compile this and then go over to the construction script so this will basically run before our game has even started 
and we just want to call the update brick color um, function. Next, if we go over to the event graph, before we um, destroy our brick, we want to make sure that it basically has no more strength left. So when our brick hits something, before we do all of this, we are going to get our brick strength and just drag off here and look for the decrement int. This will basically decrease it by one. And then if our brick strength is basically equal to zero, so that basically means it has um, no more um, strength left in it, we will do a branch. And if that's true, then we'll basically um, spawn a particle effect and then destroy it. If this is false though, then we will just call the um, update brick color. And we can just compile this and let's just go play and test this out. So we made it so the brick strength starts off at three. So if I go play, goes red, then yellow, and then it's destroyed. Nice. So you may want to basically dynamically change the value of this inside of our game. So make sure that this is instance editable and exposed on spawn. Then just go compile. And let's say I duplicate this. So I'll press Alt and duplicate it. Let's make it so this has a brick strength of one. Then we'll see its color changes and it's yellow. So with that, we can basically easily see the color that our brick has. Nice. Hello, the next thing we're gonna do is create a score system, which will basically keep track of the player's score. Whenever the player successfully hits a brick, we're basically gonna increase the player's score. So to get started, let's just right click and go use interface and select a widget blueprint, select user widget, and just call this the player HUD. Open this up, and if we go to the palette and just look for a canvas panel, and then in the palette, if we just look for a horizontal box and just expand it and make sure to anchor this to the top, then look for a vertical box and just place this inside of the horizontal box. Then we're going to look for some text and just place the text inside of the vertical box and add two pieces of text to the vertical box. For this first one, make it say score. And then this second text, we're going to make it display the player's score. I want there to be a bit of padding between these, so if I go here and go padding and go to the bottom, I'll add a padding of 20. Next, let's go over to our graph and let's just create a new variable and let's just call it score. Make the um, type an integer, then just right click and look for add custom event call this update score and when we call this custom event we'll get our score and just increment it so increase it by one connect this into here then go over to the designer and go back to this text block and just bind it to the score then we just want to compile this close this and go over to our paddle blueprint go over to the event graph and after we set up the controls we can drag off here and create a widget. This widget will be the player HUD. And then we will just right click and promote this to a variable and call this player HUD. And then finally, we just want to add this to our viewport and just go compile. So if I play my game, I should see the score in the top left. So yeah, the top left corner. So we're going to make it so when we hit a brick, our score will increase. Next, if we just head over to the brick blueprint, select it and go to details and look for tag. We just want to add a tag to this and just call it brick. Compile and save this and then head over to the ball blueprint. And basically, if we hit something with the brick tag, then we're going to increase our player's score. Right now, um, this blueprint doesn't have a way to communicate with the player character. So if we just go to the event begin play, event begin play, we're going to create a reference to our player character. We can right click and look for get player pawn. So this will basically get the um, pawn that we're playing the game as. 
and that's going to be the paddle blueprint so we can just drag off here and cast to the paddle blueprint right click here and remove this to arrival and this way we have a reference to our player character I'll just connect this into here and then event hit if the other actor that I hit has a tag so I'll look for has tag and the tag is brick make sure it's spelled exactly the same how you spelt it inside of your um, brick blueprint otherwise this may not work and if we do we'll just branch connect this into here and if this is true we can drag in our paddle reference get the um, score sorry I think we called it player HUD yep get the player HUD and then we can call the update um, score inside of the player HUD so if I just compile this and now go play when I hit something we can see my score is increasing nice the next thing I want to do is add a life system so right now if the player loses the ball nothing happens we need to add a life system so the player only gets a certain amount of balls to kind of destroy all the bricks in the level with so to create this let's first go over to our player HUD and we can just copy this vertical box and paste it again inside of this horizontal box now I want there to be a bit of padding between these two boxes so if I just select this one go to padding and let's add a padding of 50 actually I'll make it 250 okay and I'm gonna make this a lifes then we just want to compile this close this and go back to our um, paddle blueprint and create a new variable and just call this lifes change this to be a integer compile this and for the time being let's just make this three so this represents the amount of lifes that my player character has go back to the player HUD and we want to go over to the graph and we are going to create a reference to our player character again so I'm just gonna get my player pawn cast to the um, paddle blueprint and I will promote this to a variable and then if we just compile this go back to the designer we can select this text box go bind and because we created a reference to our um, paddle blueprint we can actually reference all of the variables inside of them and we just want to bind this to the lice so this should display the amount of lice that my player um, character has so I go compile close this and play it should display three because I have three lice nice so that's working correctly the next thing we're going to do is basically create a invisible box which will destroy the ball and when this happens we will basically remove one of our players lives so I'm just going to right click go blueprint class select an actor I will call this ball destroyer if I open this up let's go add and look for a box collision and I'm just going to expand it go over to the event graph and scroll down with the box selected on component begin overlap if this ever overlaps the um, ball so I'll for cast to ball we will destroy the ball so drag off here and look for a destroy actor and make sure to connect ball into here just go compile and then let's drag in this ball destroyer somewhere into our um, level it's kind of small so let's just go select and scale objects and make sure that it kind of fits around here let's test that everything is working so if I just go play okay so when my um, ball went to the ball destroyer it got destroyed the next thing we need to do is basically make it so when we lose a ball it will remove one of the player's lives and then we will spawn in another ball if the player has enough lives to help create the system we're going to create a new blueprint which will basically spawn in the balls for us so i'm going to right click go blueprint class select an actor and call this the ball spawner blueprint then if we open up the ball spawner and go over to the event graph right click and look for add custom event and just call this spawn ball 
when we call this, we just want to drive off here, and look for spawn, actor from cast. The actor we're going to spawn is going to be a ball. And then where we're going to spawn it, we can just right click, and look for get, actor, transform. And then event begin play, we want to call the um, spawn ball. So this will basically handle the spawning of balls for us. Just compile this, close this, and then we can delete our ball and drag in the ball spawner. Then we just want to go over to our ball blueprint, create another variable, and just call this the ball spawner reference. Change this variable type to be the ball spawner. BP and select object reference. Make this instance editable and expose on spawn and just compile and save this. Then head back to the ball spawner. Right click on this spawn ball and go um, refresh nodes and you should see the ball spawner reference. Drag off here and look for self. So when we spawn in our ball, we're making sure the ball has a reference to the um, ball spawner. And now if I were to go back to my ball blueprint, right click and look for event destroyed. When the ball is destroyed, if my player character has enough life will spawn in a ball. So if I just drag in my paddle um, blueprint reference and look for get lifes. If this is greater than zero, I'll drag a fair and look for a branch. Then we will drag in our ball spawner reference and call the um, spawn event. So the spawn ball custom event. I'll just connect true into here and go compile and see. Then there's one more thing we need to do. If we just close this and go back to our ball destroyer, when we basically um, destroy our ball, before we destroy it, let's just drag off here and get the um, paddle reference that we have. And then we just want to get their um, lives and look for decrement int to decrease it by one. Connect all of this into here. Then just go compile, save, and close this, and now a good play. When I lose a ball, we can see my lives decrease, and when I have zero lives, it no longer spawns in a ball. Nice. Okay, next, I just want to make a quick change. I need to make it so my player character can't, like, fly through these walls. So if we just go back to our paddle blueprint, um, just make sure that we have sweep checked. This will prevent our um, player from basically flying through the walls in our um, level. Okay, nice. And another thing, I just want to make it so when my ball spawns, it actually doesn't spawn towards the player. It should actually spawn like towards the bricks. That way my player has some like time to react and stuff when the ball um, disappears. Just like that. Okay. Next, let's create a game over screen which will basically appear when the player runs out of lives. To get started, I'm just going to right click, go user interface, select a widget blueprint, and select the user widget, and we can just call this the game over widget blueprint. I will open this up, go to my palette, and look for a canvas panel. Then look for a vertical box, and just anchor it to the center of the screen, and look for some text, Drag it inside with the vertical box and just center it so it's kind of in the middle. And let's just make this say game over. Then we're going to add some buttons to this um, game over screen later. But for now, let's just go back to the palette and look for a blur and select background blur, drag it in, and for the anchor, anchor it across the whole of the screen. And make sure we put a value of zero in each of the offsets. And then for the blur strength, let's make it 50. Now we don't want our background blur to be above our text. So for the Z order, this basically represents the layer which things are on. Make it minus one. This will make it basically appear behind our text. And then when my game over screen kind of appears, I don't want it to just instantly appear. I kind of want it to fade onto the screen. So we're going to create a simple animation to do this. So just select your canvas panel, then go to animations, Go add new animations and just call this fade. Select the fade track, then go track and select canvas panel. And we're going to be tracking its render opacity. So go track 
and select render of opacity. Initially, we want this to be zero. So type in zero and just add a keyframe. Then drag this all the way to one second. And then we want to change the render opacity to be one and add a keyframe. So over the duration of one second, we make this appear. If we just unselect the fade animation and then go over to the graph and event construct. So as soon as our widget appears on the screen, we want to look for play animation and the animation is going to be the fade track and we can just connect this into here then if we go over to the ball blueprint so when the ball is destroyed if we don't have more than zero lives then we can drag off false and it will create widget and that widget is going to be the game over widget and then we will add this to our viewport let's compile this and let me just fail. So when I fail, it says game over, and then this screen kind of fades to black. We're gonna polish up the game over screen a bit later, but for now, this is fine. Then we wanna create a very similar system for when the player destroys all of the bricks in the level. We wanna tell them that they've won the game. So I'm just gonna right click here and duplicate this and call this win widget blueprint. I will head inside here and I'm just going to make this say, you win. We can compile this. Then if I head over to the brick blueprint, after a brick is destroyed, we want to quickly check to see if it's the last brick in the level that's been destroyed. So if we just drag off here, and look for get all actors of class. And for the act of class, look for the brick. So this will get every single brick actor. Drag off here and look for length. So this will basically tell me how many bricks there are inside of the level. If this is ever equal to zero, that means all the bricks in the level have been destroyed. So we want to have a branch. And if this is true, we can basically show a wind screen. Or if you have another level, we can make the player go on to the next level. For now, I'm just going to make this show the wind screen. But I'll show you the other option later. So if we just drag off true and look for create widget and just make this a win and then we will add this to our viewport we can go compile and I'm just going to make it so there's one brick let's move it to the center and let's just go play so when I um, destroy that brick it says you win I also just want to pause the game because um, the game may still be playing in the background. So if I go to my win widget blueprint, um, after the one second animation, because this animation is one second, I'm gonna have a delay of one second, and then I will set game to be paused. And I'll just check this. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is kind of design up my level, because it looks kind of um, boring, so, I'm going to go to my materials. Next, we just want to create a new material and just call this unlit mat. Open it up and we just want to look for constant three vector. Connect this into the base color here and just go apply. And just drag this onto the background floor. So right now, um, this floor is kind of reflecting the light surface. And we don't want that for our game, so if we just select it, select this material, and make sure it's unlit, this will make it so it does not reflect the light in our game. Okay, nice. I'm just going to add another brick, just so I don't instantly win. And then, right now, we have a perspective camera. I want to make it so the camera is flat inside of our game, so I'm just going to select my camera actor, and change it to be orthographic. This will make it flat. And the higher we make this value, the more zoomed it, the more zoomed out the camera is going to be. So you may need to play around with it, but I'm just going to get, let's say, 5,000. And that seems to be okay. I'm also just going to move my UI elements a bit. So if I just go back to my um, blueprints and to the um, player HUD, let's just increase the padding or feel free to play around. I'm just going to make this 900. So it's like on the opposite side. 
actually I'll make it like 1200 but feel free you can just customize it however you feel and then one more thing you may want to make it so um, I don't know your paddle and your ball are glowing so I'll show you how to create some glowing materials so I'm just gonna copy this master material and I'm just gonna rename it so you can press F2 to quickly rename things and let's just call it um, glow underscore material open this up and we just want to drag off this color and multiply it and what we're going to multiply it by just right click and look for constant and we just want constant select this and right click and convert it to a parameter I just call this glow strength make the default value 50 and just connect this into B and just connect this into emissive color we can apply this right now it's black so it's not glowing at all but if I change this to be something like red something that has color then we can see it's kind of glowing let's just apply this and I'm just gonna create a couple of glowing materials so I'm gonna create a blue glowing material and if we just open this up if I just check glow strength and color I can change the strength so maybe I want it to be 150 and I'll change this to be a blue color I can save this and if I go over to my paddle let's just change it so it's using my glow blue mat I can compile this and when I play my game we can see my ball is glowing sorry my paddle is glowing and I think that looks just kind of cooler so feel free to make other materials and just apply them to the colors or the bricks or the walls if you want to do that okay so I've just updated my game so um, all of the materials are kind of glowing inside of my level and you may notice when we play um, our game at the start everything's glowing really brightly then it kind of fades that's because of the setting inside of Unreal Engine if we just go edit and go project settings and then look for auto exposure and just make sure that this is unchecked so auto exposure kind of makes it so the game will kind of mimic our eyes so for example if you um go into a room full of light your eyes will kind of like adapt and then it come and then it becomes normal that's what auto exposure does inside of Unreal Engine so we just want to turn that off if you don't want that effect so now if we play our game we don't have that auto exposure although everything is very very bright and you may not want that so if we just select our camera and then look for search and look for brightness select min EV and max EV and the higher we make these values the less um, light there is going to be in our game so if I make this 0 and max EV 0 then it's going to be quite bright as you can see but if I make this like 10 and 10 then it's not going to be that bright so it's entirely up to you for now let's just go with 3 I think that's okay so that's like decent maybe it's a bit too bright actually so maybe I want like 7 yeah I think that's fine and then it's kind of um, very bright when we're working with it what we can do is just go here and change it to unlit so it's a bit easier to see but that's up to you okay so the next thing we're gonna do is design a main menu so I'm just gonna right click and go use interface select a widget blueprint use a widget and let's just call this the main menu so this is going to be pretty similar to the main menu that we made in the last game but I'm just going to recap it if we go over to the palette and look for a canvas panel and then look for some text drag this into the center and let's just call this brick breaker I'll make the font of this 100 and 50 then I will look for a vertical box and anchor this to the center of my screen and I'll look for some buttons and place two of these inside of here and I'll look for some text for each button and then if we select each button make sure this first one is a variable and call it to the play button and select the second one make sure it is a variable 
and call this the quit button. This first text, let's make it say play. This second text, let's make it say quit. And then if I select this one and go to padding, let's add a padding of 50. And let's just increase the text on both of these to like 100. Yeah, that's fine. Then we just want to select this button, scroll down and go on click. When we click on this play button, we want to open level by object reference and open up level one. Then if we go back to the designer and select the quit one, when we click on the quit button, we just want to drag off here and look for quit game and this will quit our game. We can then save this. And we just want to create a new level for our main menu. So I'm going to go File, New Level, select an empty level though this time. I'll save everything. Then I'm just going to save this and save this as my main menu. Level, and then we can just go here, Open Level Blueprint, and event we can play. We're going to create a widget, and that widget is going to be the main menu, Widget Blueprint, and then we want to add this to our viewport, compile this when I play my game, which is the Brick Breaker. Although there are a couple more settings we need to basically fix, because if I click with my mouse, it will disappear. So if we just go back to the main menu, Event Construct, we just want to right click and get the player's controller. Drag off here, and look for Set, show mouse cursor. Make sure it's checked, and then drag off here, and look for Set, Input, UI only. This will allow us to interact with UI elements. Just copy this. And then if I were to go play and click play, we start my game. Although um, I can't control my player character. So we need to make it so when we um, start in the um, level one map, we basically can do that. So if we just go over to our paddle blueprint and over to the event graph, event begin play, we are just gonna right click and look for get player controller and just drag off here and look for set input game only and also just drag off here and look for set show mouse cursor and make sure it's unchecked go compile and now I go play and then play I start my game instantly as this character okay nice now that we've added the um, main menu if we just go back to it and copy this vertical box and go over to the game over, I'm actually just going to make this game over text a lot bigger. So let's make it like 100. And actually, sorry, my bad, we're going to go back to the main menu. And we just want to copy these buttons, control C, and then paste them inside of this vertical box. And I'm just going to add a bit of padding here, let's say 50. And instead of saying play, we can make this say retry. I'll select this, and when I click on this button, we want to open level by object reference and just select the um, level one. Then if I select the quit button, when we click on this, we want to quit our game and then just make sure to do this exact same thing for the um, windscreen. So I'm just going to go over to my wind widget blueprint and paste this inside of here. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did in the game over. I'll just fast forward. Okay, so I've done that. Then there's one final thing you want to do. Just go back to the um, main menu and just copy these notes here and add them here and go back to a game over so when we get game over we also want to pause the game so I'm just going to have a delay of one second and then paste these notes here okay then we can go compile now I can go play 
and I have my Brick Breaker game. The next thing I want to show you is right now we only have one level. If you wanted to design this game to have multiple different levels, I'm now going to cover that now. So if we just go to our maps, select level one, right click and go duplicate and just call this level two, head inside here. And for level two, I'm just going to make it have one block, which has a brick strength of three. Then head back to level one. And then we just want to go to our blueprint folder and create another blueprint class. Select an actor and just call this level tracker. Blueprint, head inside here. And we just want to create a new variable and call it level number. For the variable type, make it an integer. Make it instance eligible and expose and spawn. Just compile this. Drag this into here, somewhere into your level. And make the level number one. Then head over to the brick blueprint. So if we destroy all the bricks on our level, what we're going to do is just drag up here and look for get actor of class. The actor is going to be the level tracker. Then we just want to get the um, level um, number that we're on, drag up here and look for switch on int. Add a couple of pins. So for now, add um, three pins. 0, 1, and 2. Right now, we've made it so we are on level 1. And if we destroy all of the blocks in level 1, then we can just drag off here and look for open level by object reference and open up level 2. However, if we're on level 2, then we're just going to show the win screen because the player has beaten the game. And you can do that for however many levels you want to do. So let's just go compile, save, and test this out. So in level 1, I've made this one. I'm just going to go over to level 2 and I'm just going to add my um, level tracker and I'll make this 2 and then if I go back to level 1 let's play it and let me just destroy all the blocks then we can see it takes me to level 2 then when I beat level 2 it says you win so with that we've created a simple um, level continue and then attached in the description of this video, I'm going to make sure to include some sound effects. So we're going to use the ping pong sound effect that we used last time. And I also have this breaking sound effect. If we open up the ball blueprint, whenever this hits something, we can just drag up here and look for play sound at location. And we can play that ping pong sound. And then for the location, Let's just right click and let's look at the location and connect this into here. Then go compile and save. Then let's go over to our own brick. Now, whenever our brick is destroyed, let us quickly, before it's destroyed, let's play a sound at location. That sound will be the breaking sound. We can right click and let's look at the location and just connect this into here then if I go compile and I go play our game has some sound effects, nice the final thing you can do is just export the game and to do that we can just go edit, project settings maps and modes and then change the game default map to be the main menu so this is going to be the first map that the player goes to when they um, export the game and then you can just go platforms windows package project and then it will package your project for you so it should be in this folder called windows and if i just double click and open it up i'm in my brick breaker game i can go play and i can just play the simple game that i made nice so that's all for this tutorial if you enjoyed like and subscribe and if you want to learn how to create even more full games inside of unreal engine don't forget to check out my courses on my website bye